Welcome back to the Wardrobe Overworld, and in today's video we're going to be discussing the Sylvaneth units and putting them on a tier list. Before we get started, I have a couple of announcements. Um, so, the channel has started to grow really well. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, and as such, I wanted to ask you, the community, if there's any kind of special... Um, subscriber goal that you guys would enjoy like maybe i could show you all my sylvaneth units that i've painted up or just kind of some of my personal hobby stuff that i've painted um or we can do something else as well i i'm open to suggestions and the second announcement is because we're starting to get close to a thousand subscribers i've also started a patreon that is mostly just kind of there uh, if you feel like you want to support me and help me become a bit more consistent and do this, um, continue to do this as a part-time hobby, part-time job thing. Um, no pressure at all, uh, but I just thought I would mention that I've started that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So, all of the units listed on screen are what I will be talking about in today's video. I'm going to be ignoring the Warhammer Underworlds or um, the Cursed Cities hero, mostly because I don't think they are good enough to warrant anything on this list. They're kind of meh. First up is the tier four, the not very useful tier. There's only one unit on this list, or on this tier, and it's the Branch Witch. The main problem with the Branch Witch is that she is outclassed by all other Sylvaneth wizard heroes. Her unique spell is good, but not very good on her. And she's just kind of a squishy melee hero. She won't last very long, um, and she doesn't really provide enough to warrant taking. Next is the situational tier. These guys are good, but in a specific situation. So starting off is the Tree Revenants. I personally love Tree Revenants. I think they're an awesome unit and they look very cool. And they have a lot of um, versatility, which is very useful. Um, their main asset is their teleportation. Just having one on the board is value in itself because your opponent has to think, well, what if these Tree Revenants teleport over here? Or what if the Tree Revenants try and take this back objective? It forces your opponent to make choices, which is always a good thing. Uh, they have an alright melee capability, but they're just incredibly squishy. And that's why the Tree Revenants, as well as the Spite Revenants, are on Tier 3 situational tier, is because they come in squads of 5 instead of 10. Um, they are incredibly squishy, and they're not going to survive any combat, really. Um, and their melee is okay. Next up is the Spite Revenants, the other uh, unit built from the Revenants kit. Uh, I also love Spite Revenants. I find them very enjoyable, and their lore is pretty interesting as well, at least for me. Um, they have good melee. And they, what they, their kind of thing is they throw out a whole lot of um, low rend attacks, which is cool and it's a good uh, like thematic thing. But Age of Sigmar 3.0 is all about rend, and so lacking rend really curbs them here. Um, and also, same with the tree revenants, they're very squishy. They're not going to survive much of anything. Next is the tree lord. Now, there's nothing particularly wrong with the Tree Lord. He's just a general purpose monster. Um, and with all of the Tree Lord variants like Tree Lord, Tree Lord Ancient, or the Spirit of Durthu, having a second uh, tree teleport per turn is useful. And what I mean by this is so, how Sylvaneth teleporting works is it's on our allegiance abilities, and um, it's once per like one unit per turn uses the allegiance abilities, whereas all the Tree Lord variants have an ability on their, their personal war scroll that is a different ability per se. So you can have two tree teleports per turn, which is nice. Um, I'd say a Tree Lord is a fine unit if you just kind of want a big monster behemoth to do monstrous actions or to just kind of be there. Um, or have one to summon with Ilarial if the situation calls for it. 
Next is the Tree Lord Ancient. This guy is he's a he's a cool model. He has a lot of uh, use cases, but he's kind of outclassed by Warsong Revenant and Durthu for either role that he's trying to fill, either a caster or a um, melee monster. So he's kind of like a, a hybrid between the two units, and it's kind of the sum of the parts is less than the whole. Whereas I, I think I'd prefer a Warsong Revenant or a Durthu um, for either role that a Tree Lord is going to try and fill. He's still really good, and there's definitely use cases for him, especially to get a guaranteed Wildwood drop. That is his best asset. Next is the Kurnoth Hunters with Great Bows. So these guys are interesting, and it's nice to have some dedicated ranged firepower. And they do, do dish out a lot of damage, but they're not the most accurate. Hitting on fours base, and then the leader hitting on threes. It's kind of meh. It's it's a little hard to swallow when the other Kurnoth Hunter variants are just better. But I, I I like taking great bows occasionally, just so I have some ranged threat that I can plink off a hero or shoot at something if I need it to be shot at. Next is the good tier. These guys are probably on the upper end of the various units, but aren't necessarily auto-include. And first up is our beautiful Everqueen, Miss Alariel. So I personally think that the latest iteration Alariel is in is the best she's ever been. She's incredibly viable, and you can definitely do builds with or without her, which I think is um, the best place to be at. You don't want to be pigeonholed into one specific build or one specific hero all the time. Um, and so having having the uh, the options of taking her or not taking her is nice. It's good for a change. Um, I think Alario's greatest strengths is that she's incredibly flexible. She's all around amazing. She's great in combat, she has good magic, and she's a good support. She is kind of just all around really good. The problem with this flexibility is she's not the best in all of that. She doesn't have any innate pluses to cast, which kind of sucks, but she still gets three casts, three unbinds. She's good in combat. She doesn't have all that many melee profiles, just two, I think. Um, but the two that she has are pretty good, especially her beetle. And the fact that she can retreat and shoot or retreat and charge is very, very powerful in her flexibility. And her support is good as well for either magical support or command or her command ability support. Very powerful. Next up is the Dryads. Uh, this is the best battle line choice because their intended role, they fulfill it well enough. Uh, these the Dryads are there to slow down the enemy and hold the line. You're not going to get any damage out of a Dryad. They're there to die, really. But they are cheap and they are somewhat hard to get rid of and you can summon a lot of them with another unit on this list. Um, and teleporting them through the Wildwoods to uh, defend an objective or otherwise just annoy your opponent is really good. Um, but a caveat with this is in order to have them at their full potential, you need them near Wildwoods and you need them in a little bit of a bigger squad so they get the minus one to hit them and plus one to save. Next up is the Arch Revenant. I love the Arch Revenant. I think it's one of the more beautiful models in the Age of Sigmar range. I just find it so cool. Um, and it's a good little hero if you're wanting to do a bit of a more martial build for Sylvaneth. Her, uh, their command ability is very good, just plus one attack. Very simple, very straightforward. Amazing for uh, Spirits of Durthu to get more attacks on that Guardian Sword or um, just more attacks on your large uh, blobs of units. Um, and they are really fast. Having a base 12 inch move with fly is very powerful. They're also fairly uh, capable in melee, but they are squishy, so just be aware of that. Next up is the Spirited Durthu. Now, out of the Sylvaneth range, I think Spirited Durthu is the best beat stick hero monster, or just he is where all of your martial power is going to come from. He's very, very scary in melee, and he's incredibly easy to stack buffs on. If you've seen my example uh, Sylvaneth lists, you know that I have a special beat stick list that it revolves around 
buffing a Spirits of Durthu to the max, so they just hurt like heck. And you can really dish out some damage if you need to with a Spirit of Durthu. Uh, last in the tier 2 is the Chronoth Hunters with Great Swords. These guys are solid, they're good. Uh, they work best in small units. The only problem with them is that scythes exist. Uh, in the current uh, Age of Sigmar 3, Rand is king, and so the fact that the scythes just have more Rand and can work in big units kind of uh, makes the swords a little bit less um, less important to take, really. But they're still really good. Last is the tier 1, which I would say is the auto-include tier. Uh, for starters is the Branch Wraith. This, I never leave home without a Branch Wraith. Um, their main job is to spit out Dryads all game long. If you are either in Gnarl Root or otherwise take some artifacts that can help casting, which Sylvaneth has quite a few, you can potentially get uh, 50 free Dryads over the course of the game. And that is so powerful. That's really, really good. And if you, so how her summoning works is you need to summon the dryads at a wildwood, and then those dryads can teleport through the wildwoods. So you just can put units where you need to put them with the branch wraith. And I think that is something that cannot be overstated, is how important having a branch wraith is. Next is Dreitsha Hamadrath. I think Dreitsha is A, one of the coolest models ever. Just a B tree mech suit. Um, and she is all about the damage. If you need damage, Dreitch is here for that. And what's even better about that is because of her, um, I believe it's called Mercurial Aspect, she has a flexible application of that damage. Are you going to be more likely to do damage at range? Or are you going to be more likely to do it in melee? She can kind of switch between two forms per turn, either a ranged form or a melee form. Um, and also tree mech suit, so that's really cool. <laughs> um, and also she helps out spite revenants a lot. So if you enjoy spite revenants and how they look and the lore and theme behind them like I do, bring a Drycha so you can kind of buff up your spites more. Um, overall, I definitely think Drycha is an auto-include. Next up is the latest addition to the uh, Sylvanas roster, and one that was um, kind of needed. It was a really good uh, addition, I think. Uh, the Warsong Revenant is the best wizard in Sylvanath. I think that the innate plus one to cast they get, and the access to all the spells, and two casts, one on bind, is incredibly useful. Um, and they have an amazing unique spell combo with un uh, Umbral Spell Portal that they can kind of put that spell portal out there and just sit in home base or near a Wildwood and do a lot of area of effect damage. Um, it's a very, very nasty combo and definitely one of the better combos for Sylvaneth right now. Um, and it's more just the fact that they are magically flexible and they are consistent. Really, really powerful. I always take an, a Warsong Revenant. Last but not least is the Kurnoth Hunters with Great Scythes. Uh, these are the best Kurnoth Hunters at the moment. They're, the fact that they can work in large squads and the fact that they have Rend makes them very powerful. They're hard to shift, they're tanky, they also have a lot of damage and a lot of Rend. So definitely something you should include if you enjoy Kurnoth Hunters. Well, that was the Sylvaneth unit tier list. Um, kind of a different video format, so if you enjoy this kind of video, please let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can do some more of these little tier lists for other factions. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment, and if you enjoy my, ki my content, please consider subscribing. Um, this has been the Wargrove of Well, and I'll talk to you guys next time.